Hey there, it's Book Riot contributing editor Sharifa here to talk to you about one of my favorite rainy day reads. And it's equally rainy day friendly film adaptation. Spring is approaching, but in many parts of the country, if not the world, winter has come and would have you believing it's here to stay. Where I am in Southern California, it's been raining nonstop, and I know we all enjoy a laugh at Southern Californians who cry Stormwatch and take to Amazon for inflatable rafts with two day free shipping, but I literally drove by people who were running around the streets with pots over their heads, which was funny until I realized I also don't own an umbrella. But where I fail at outdoor prep for inclement weather, I succeed at reading because I'm certainly not going outside in that stuff, so why not swaddle myself in fleece cats and books? So I scoured my bookshelves in search of my favorite cold weather reads that you might want to consider for your next rainy day retreat, and I came up with one solid recommendation that never fails me on a cold and or rainy day. Cold Comfort Farm by Stella Gibbons. The word cold is in the title. That's the beginning and end of my reasoning. Strike that. Have you ever had an experience where you become vividly aware of your own coziness by reading about other people's discomfort and suddenly you're swathed in something between smugness and a snuggie? Let's call it a smuggie. That's what you're getting out of this book, which mostly takes place in a cold, muddy English pocket. In what may be the 1930s, there's a note at the beginning of the book that says the action of the story takes place in the near future. The book was published in the early 1930s. In what may be the 1930s, Flora Post of strong will and slender angle hides to cold comfort to impose herself upon her relatives, the Stark Adders, after both her parents perish from influenza. At 19 years old, with only 100 pounds a year and no property, Flora does not want a job. She's been raised on an aristocratic diet. The Stark Adders of Cold Comfort Farm, however, do not share Flora's sensibilities. They live in a creaky, leaky, aptly named household populated by a delightfully macabre and whimsical cast of characters, including Great Aunt Auto Doom, who saw something nasty in the woodshed. The summary on the back of the book covers the cast of characters quite well. There's Judith alone in her grief, Amos called by God, Seth smoldering with sex, Edith who needed a little polish, and we're all acquainted with dear old Aunt Otta. Flora, who somehow manages to be both blithe and blasé, decides to fix everyone at cold comfort by inserting herself into their business. I suspect that if you enjoy Jane Austen's Emma, you'll enjoy Cold Comfort Farm. In fact, there's mention of Miss Austen and her novel Persuasion in this book. I first saw the 1995 TV movie adaptation of Cold Comfort Farm as a kid and remembered it as a weird dream, only to read the book for the first time many years later and realize it was an actual thing. Now, it may seem odd that I would think I dreamed the whole thing up, but one of the reasons this book is one of my favorite rainy day reads is that there's some surreal imagery at play in this story. It doesn't end with Aunt Otta's constant cryptic mentions of the woodshed. There's the fact that Cold Comfort Farm is located in a fictional village called Howling. There's this plant, the Sookbind, that is as present as a character and when in bloom has weird, almost mystical effects on people. There's Elphine, who loves the outdoors, but who I, as a child, decided was a wood nymph. By the way, I was disappointed to find out that Sookbind is not a real thing. The whole of my botany-loving being wanted it to be true and actually looked it up. So anyway, after I realized Cold Comfort Farm was an actual thing, I then re-watched the movie, trapped as I was in a vicious movie before book, book before movie cycle. So if you haven't seen the movie, you really should watch it, but only after you read the book, obviously. Just kidding, do what you like, there is no such thing as the book police. When I rewatched the movie, I was stunned by how star-studded it is. But BBC is a small world, and I guess I should have been more surprised, aka disappointed, by Colin Firth's absence. Here are some actual members of the cast. I think you'll recognize some of these names. Kate Beckinsale, Stephen Fry, Sir Ian McKellen, Joanna Lumley, Dame Eileen Atkins, you get the point. There are obviously differences between the TV adaptation and the book, but the cast did their characters more than justice. Perfect rainy day read, perfect rainy day movie. There you have it. Until next time, stay warm and stay reading.